Hi everybody, welcome back to Synthetic Biology 1. Today, we're going to talk about physically assembling pieces of DNA with restriction enzyme cloning. This is the oldest method that I know of for producing recombinant DNA, and it's the simplest. So, it's a good place to begin your training as a DNA artist. Here I have a restriction enzyme called EcoR1. The eco is for E. coli, R refers to the specific strain where this enzyme was found, and 1 because it was the first enzyme found in that strain. We use Roman numerals because it's more cool and sciencey looking. EcoR1 cuts DNA, but only at a specific sequence, G-A-A-T-T-C. It's highly specific, and it doesn't cut any other sequence, even similar looking ones. The sequence is rare enough that it doesn't occur very often, just by chance. And if you don't like GAATTC, then there's dozens of other enzymes that you can buy that cut other sequences. Here I've got a plasmid vector. This is the circle of DNA that's going to carry our new gene. That vector has been designed with an MCS, or multiple cloning site, that contains short recognition sites for EcoR1 and many similar enzymes. In this plasmid, the sequence GAATTC is found only one time in the MCS. Now, let's perform a digest by mixing the plasmid and the enzyme together. The enzyme finds the restriction site and cuts the plasmid open. But the EcoR1 enzyme doesn't cut straight through the double-stranded DNA. Instead, it cuts at a funny angle, leaving these little pieces of single-stranded DNA poking out. These are called sticky ends, and they'll help us later when we're trying to paste our DNA back together again. Once the DNA is digested for our vector, it's ready to receive a new gene. So, let's go and get that gene from another plasmid vector, which I have over here. Here's the plasmid, here's the gene that we're trying to move, and here are the EcoR1 sites that we can use to cut out specifically that piece of DNA. Now, hold on a minute there. How can we be sure that the restriction sites are in exactly the right places? What if this plasmid doesn't have EcoR1 restriction sites? Or what if they cut in the middle of the gene, instead of just perfectly at the ends? Well, that's a good question. One important limitation of restriction enzyme cloning is that we need unique restriction sites in just the right places. Back in the old-timey days, you just had to get lucky and discover sites in the right places. These days, we have tricks to make sure that we get the sites that we need when we need them. But that's a story for another time. Just for right now, indulge me. We cut the gene from the plasmid using EcoR1 sites in the perfectly right places, and run out the digestion products on an agarose gel. This separates the fragments by size and allows us to collect just the shorter fragment of DNA that contains our gene of interest. We call this piece of DNA the insert. Just like before, the restriction enzyme has cut the DNA along this funny diagonal line, and it leaves behind sticky ends. Now, look what happens when we mix the digested vector and the digested insert together. The sticky ends match up. The short pieces of single-stranded DNA that stick out can bind to each other following the normal DNA base pairing rules. It's a weak interaction, but it's strong enough to hold the DNA together, so that now, when we add a DNA ligase enzyme, it can connect the two fragments together and create an intact, seamless piece of DNA. This piece of DNA we can transform into bacteria, just like we would a normal plasmid, where it will replicate and divide, just like a normal plasmid. Now, there's some things we have to keep in mind. Using this method, we have no way of controlling which direction our new DNA is facing within the vector. Because we have the same sticky ends on both sides, the DNA can ligate in either direction. Also, notice how easy it is for the cut plasmid to simply re-ligate to, to itself. If this happens, we just recreated the same vector that we started with. That's not synthetic. That's not synthetic at all. One strategy to prevent this is to treat the plasmid with a phosphatase enzyme that removes the phosphate groups needed by the DNA ligase. That way, the ligation reaction can only occur when the phosphate group is provided by the insert fragment. 
but even this strategy is not really perfect and vector re-ligation is a common technical problem that we get when performing standard restriction enzyme cloning. We should also keep in mind that any sticky end can bind to any other sticky end that matches it. It doesn't have to be just the insert that sticks to the vector. We can also get vector-vector pairs and insert-insert pairs, and we even get these long chains where the insert sticks to itself over and over and over again. This is less of a problem uh, than maybe it sounds, because remember, the plasmid backbone is required for replication in bacteria, so only DNA fragments that have an intact circular plasmid will replicate and grow. Most of these are, in fact, the thing that we actually want. And there you have it. It's baby's first clone gene. Restriction enzymes give us a basic tool for cutting up DNA and pasting it back together. But it looks like we still have a ways to go with this technology. We need to solve the directionality problem and the re-ligation problem. And we don't want to rely just on luck to find restriction sites in the right places. We want to control exactly where the restriction enzyme works. But today is an introduction to basic cloning, and we'll have to leave those deep cuts for another time. So until then, keep it together. Thank <laughs> you.